Maybe. But tonight, you're my little bitch. Yeah, we're gonna get demonetized for sure after that one. That's one of the best lights Castiel's ever said in this whole show. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for the third episode of Supernatural Season 5, Free to Be You and Me. This one has Sam and Dean going on separate paths. Another classic line of Dean saying, eat at twilight before he cuts off the head of a vampire, whereas Sam goes to work at a bar. And that's kind of it. But at the same time, there's a lot of development between the two of them in this episode, as well as the overall plot. And technically speaking, you could almost call this a filler episode. Almost. But the amount of inner development between the characters, not only Sam and Dean, but also Castiel and even Lucifer, is so well done in this episode that it's actually the best episode of the season so far. We see Sam having flashbacks or what we assume to be flashbacks or some sort of dream of Jessica. Oh god the microphone's been over here this whole time. We see Sam dealing with sort of hallucinations of Jessica, kind of giving him the hard truth about his choices in life, what he's done and how he's being viewed by other people. And eventually, as the episode progresses and we get towards the end, it's actually Lucifer trying to manipulate him. And that's one thing about this season that probably made Lucifer such an intriguing character and would eventually just be completely worn out by the end of his lineage in season 13, is that the character had sympathetic compassion. He had some reason for you to almost care about him. Whether it was truthful or not kind of was on the side. It's more so that they actually made you sympathize or they were trying to make you sympathize with literal Satan. While that might be a little bit odd to try and do, that does make you care more about the character, that makes you more interested in him. Villains that have compassionate or even sometimes, in, in some cases, understandable anger, understandable wants and desires, makes it a lot more relatable to any kind of audience, and that's something that was really well done with Lucifer in this season. You cared, you felt his pain, you kind of understood where he was coming from, even if he did want to kind of destroy the whole world. But at the same time, too, you know that there's something else underneath, but the whole performance is so well done. Nick does a fantastic job just really pulling you in and he's only in this episode literally at the last minute. It's still enough to set, to set the boundaries of what we're going to expect from the character, especially since he is looking at Sam as his main vessel, his main partner in the means of destroying the world. On the other hand, we have Dean kind of just going his own way, killing vampires and being happy that he doesn't have to worry about Sam. But then Castiel comes and says, I need help with something and you're the only one who can help me because I have no more friends. He's still on this quest to try and find God, but he believes that maybe he can do so by talking to Raphael, the archangel who obliterated him at the end of season four. And there was a kind of a little cool mystery trying to capture Raphael. They were trying to find him. They found his previous uh, vessel in a psych ward because the guy had completely been lobotomized and he even made the joke, yeah, that's what happened to him. Michael will do far worse to you when he's done with you. Well, that was kind of a, like just this nonchalantness. And again, Castiel in this, it's a character that I remember now. I remember this very cool, yeah, there's a few jokes here, more so of his awkwardness, especially when they go to the strip club. That part was very odd and I love it where he's like, I just told her that your father leaving you wasn't your fault. <laughs> It's like, man, this is a whole place is full of daddy issues. I do like Castiel in this episode because he is trying to take charge of a situation that he wasn't prepared to be put in. And then when they go and talk to Raphael, and Raphael, again, a sympathetic character, we see that he is tired. They are all tired. They just want paradise. They've been directionless for so long because God just totally left the building. He thinks God's dead. Castiel's kind of unconvinced, but he obviously has a lot of baggage on him now, considering literally one of the Archangels has told him that his quest is kind of pointless. As we know, he's not going to find him, but I'm still interested in this because I actually can't remember when Castiel just kind of gives up on the quest, so while this is going on and I know that it's fruitless, I'm still interested in seeing how it progresses. And then we see Castiel deliver the line to Raphael. Maybe one day, but today you're my little bitch. 
and Dean says, yeah, what he said. It's a great episode all around, actually, for a filler episode, technically speaking. The only negative I would almost say is the hunters that go and talk to Sam. I don't understand how this show always made hunters look like backwards hillbillies, except Sam and Dean. The most backward hillbilly they got was all the plaid that they would wear. Every time hunters appeared in this show, I was like, okay, Sam and Dean are getting on their bad side somehow. And in this episode, Sam refused to help them because he's just not ready, he doesn't want to. One of them gets killed and they're like, yeah, hey, you know what? I had a friend die and now I'm prepared to sacrifice a human life. I understand his friend died, but at the same time, I've never liked this bit with the hunters. They always just progress from zero to ten so fucking fast in this show. This is season five. It gets worse later on in this show. But yeah, this was the negative bit for me in this episode. Just this whole bit was just so... I don't know, kind of badly written in my opinion. I just thought, again, it's just too excessive. But otherwise though, really well put together episode. Really good base building, really good structure building. We're getting a lot of kind of necessary background, especially with what's going to happen in the next episode, the end, which is actually probably going to be a seven. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that now, but I'm probably going to give that one a seven, but we'll see. Either way, I'm going to give Free to Be You and Me a 6 out of 7. This is a great episode, I like it, it's fun, and it's got a lot of cool little bits in it that I really didn't remember until re-watching it. Anyways guys, I asked you in the last episode to give me your thoughts on this episode, so let's read those off now. Free to Be You and Me is a really entertaining episode. It was a really great idea from the writers to keep the brothers this time apart from each other for a longer time. For Sam and Dean to be apart more uh, means more screen time for Dean and Castiel, and the pair share such an amazing chemistry that there is no less than Sam and Dean on screen chemistry. Jensen and Misha have an amazing comic timing that results in some of the funniest scenes on Supernatural. There's also the very serious dramatic scene to balance everything out in this episode like for example when Dean admits that he had more fun with Castiel in the past 24 hours than he has with Sam in years this is kind of sad especially considering that as Dean said Castiel isn't that much fun I'm glad we got a scene between Sam and Jessica in a dream I think with him admitting that he loves her but how much he misses her I felt really bad for Sam in this moment Jessica who morphs into Lucifer was a really neat effect Lucifer admitting that Nick is just an improvisation, improvisation, plan B, and that Nick can barely contain him without spontaneously combusting was a nice reveal. They managed to get to the top that with the revelation that Sam is, choose, is Lucifer's true vessel. After Sam put up a brave fight, saying he'd kill himself before letting him be taken, Lucifer just casually telling him, I'll just bring you back, was very unnerving and creepy. Overall, I'd give uh, Free to Be You and Me a 6 out of 7. Yeah, well, we agree on that. Yeah, no, you point out all the points that I liked about this episode. <laughs> I love Free to Be You and Me. It's a great episode. I love Castiel in this episode, especially in the scene with Raphael where he throws shade and seeing the beginning friendship of Castiel and Dean in this episode. Yeah, no, this episode stands out a lot for what Castiel says, and again, that comment. I, I, I think I love his diss that he throws at Raphael in this episode. Free to be you and me is a really good setup of how this season is set up for uh, Sam's redemption arc. Although this episode can feel almost like it's preaching to the choir the whole time about Sam needing to go back to Dean and stopping the apocalypse, my favorite parts of this episode, however, was with Lucifer disguising as Jess. Even though Lucifer claims he would never lie to Sam, he outright made Sam think he was trying to talk, talking to his dead lover. Sam kissing Lucifer disguised as Jess on the neck makes me shudder every time upon rewatching. Also, the dialogue of how powerful archangels are is something sorely missed when the archangels return in latter seasons. Yes, I definitely agree with that. Sure, they can carry weight, but not the same weight as Season 5. The episode definitely has its funny moments, but it also made me feel sorry for Sam, because the big reveal of him being the vessel for Lucifer after the first episode of the season, learning that Dean is the vessel for Michael, really set up a lot of tension for the season, even though we would have to wait 19 more episodes to go through. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, they're already setting up the stakes, right? And they do it very well. They have a great establishment for us to work with right at the beginning of the show of this season. And finally, Free to Be You and Me, uh, at first it might be filler, but then they reintroduce the arch Archangels and holy hell, they are freaking awesome. After Raphael's introduction is one of the most badass moments of the show. I can agree with that. I, I love his effect every time. You can feel the power present on the screen, something that Eric Kripke and Jeremy Carver did right with their villains. And even though Sam and Dean are not together on screen, this episode is very important for Castiel, building his camaraderie with Dean, 
as well as his overall mentality throughout the series. The icing on the cake, Mark Pellerigo as Lucifer is one creepy son of a bitch. Yeah, no, he's... It's cool to see Mark as an actual villain rather than like a child, which is what he's going to turn into in the end of the season. Or sorry, in the end of the show. Like, that's what they did with him. They they childized uh, Lucifer, I guess you would say. They turned him into a, a whining, cry, uh, crying baby. Okay, those are your thoughts. Now we're going into the end. The episode where Dean gets a vision of the future and... Oh, I can't wait. This is actually one of my favorite episodes of this season. Anyways, guys, give me your thoughts about that in the comments below, and I'll make sure to read those off in the next review. Otherwise, if you guys like the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.